Have you ever loved someone or something so much that it caused you to do some brave and uncomfortable things? Well, I did when I dove behind a dumpster to secretly watch over my son during his first day at kindergarten. As I wanted to ensure his experience would be the best and to know that he would be brave enough to do it without me. That show of dedication and loyalty stemmed from my first introduction into corporate 25 years ago, where I worked with the world's largest leading global consumer goods company, where their senior management welcomed me in, trained me, and placed me in a supportive, multicultural, gender equal, bias awareness environment. In the middle of my career with them, I no longer wanted to do the extensive travel because I was missing my son too much. So I resigned to find local work with less travel. I knew being trained by the best wherever I'd land, I'd add value. Yeah, I discovered differences along the way in the form of microaggressions and minimum support in every level of an organization. For example, going into work one day, I saw hanging in my coworker's cubicle a noose. And after reporting it, I received ongoing retaliation. So I quietly resigned to find better work. After successfully onboarding in my new role, I noticed like the previous, I was virtually the only woman of color in a leadership position. Soon into the role, my white male manager called another woman of color a name you do not want me to say. After going to my general manager for help with some diversity issues, I in turn received a private invite to his home. Then asking the vice president to adopt more diversity, equity, and inclusion into his plan for the business, using his terminology, I was drug tested for performance enhancers. Being Michelle, I magnified myself, a brave soul and a happy spirit. I would come in regularly with treats and provide project help openly to my white peers. They enjoyed my outwardly give, but they returned the favor in private, sometimes giving me templates to use in secrecy or whispering updates of, from meetings I wasn't invited to. I'm wondering why all the secrecy and the privacy? I felt so uncomfortable and unsupported that I separated again. I went through so many corporate positions. I lost the one thing that made me connect with others, my smile. And people, I love smiling, but it dissipated slowly. It was gone. Being trained by the best, I knew I had to help my situation. So I began to look for defects in the system. And what I saw were five groups of employees that impacted revenue and empathy in the workplace. Those five groups were microaggressors, onlookers, private supporters, upper managers, and myself representing women of color. The microaggressors were uncomfortable with me as a woman of color as they focused on placing obstacles that they either picked up from past generations or they weren't aware of, yet they were not brave enough to stop. The onlookers, they were uncomfortable with the presence of women of color as they were challenged with their innate desire to help when seeing another human struggle, yet they were not brave enough to say something. The private supporters, they were uncomfortable with the presence of women of color as they did not feel the approval from the company to show help openly, and they were not brave enough to still do it. The upper managers, they were uncomfortable with women of color from showing support across the cultural norm. And they were not brave enough to stop that status quo. I, representing women of color, was uncomfortable from all of this lack of support. 
And I wasn't brave enough to continue finding creative so solutions to show my added value. All of this discomfort created distractions from us performing at our 100%. I want to share some statistics. Research shows one in five Americans are women of color. McKinsey and Company reported in 2018 that women of color hold approximately 17% of entry-level positions with only 4% at the executive level. And 38% of non-people of color struggle because of lack of inclusion in their workplace. Forbes in 2020 reported companies with diverse representation increase revenue by 19%. So I thought, what would I and my coworkers have needed to have had better experiences and became more productive? And that's to follow my idea, to be brown brave. Being brown brave would mean senior leaders in every industry would think, how can I interweave inclusion throughout my entire organization at every level, from entry to executive and into every function, from point of sale to shipping and into every action, from accountability up to recognition? Being Brown Brave would have those senior leaders love their products and services so much that they would think, what brave and uncomfortable things can I do to show my support for the woman of color and her active allies? Being Brown Brave would have those senior leaders not only talk about the uncomfortable truths regarding people of color, but think, how can I get my teams to become conscious enough to become unconsciously unbiased? Being Brown Brave would have all of us all of us step out of our comfort zone, become aware of our own biases, and go against that status quo. You're wondering, can this be done? Yes, as I've seen it in the past, and I still see it today with one of the companies I've worked for. You're wondering, how can this be done? According to those statistics, here are some things that you can do. Senior leaders, you are the power. When evaluating your top priorities on environmental, social, and governance, show your teams how healthy your appetite is for building revenue by capitalizing on women of color's hidden value. Senior executives, you are their champion. Cheer for them. Get a pulse of your employees' experience. Show them how to develop, measure, and reward this new behavior. IT, you are the veins in every organization. Pump brown bravery throughout and showcase the successes of the woman of color and her active allies. White people, you are so compassionate. Show your kindness become more visible as an ally. People of color, you are already supporting her. Do more of it. Magnify you, especially my women of color. Trust in yourself. You have value. Own your skills and talent when going into those meetings and in those interviews. I cannot dive behind buildings and secretly watch over for you. In close, my aim is not to point fingers nor seek reward, but to help make this place, this world a better place. Think, people. If you guys check my statistics, try my suggestions, we all can smile together. We can overcome our own biases. You all deserve to have those great experiences like I once had. Maya Angelou once said, the best thing I've learned is to be on my side, be an advocate for myself and those like me. Thank you. <laughs>